the journal and posting to the daybook. So the key points in this chapter are the journal is a daybook for preparing and recording low volume journals. So it's called the journal because we post important low volume journals to it. The journal is a book that's controlled by the financial controller and the finance director. And that's why it's, in, you know, so it's an important journal journal and, that, and so it's kept uh, kept separate for those and that's why it's given this sort of special name the journal even though it's a bit confusing you know all day books create journals special special journals go into the journal at level two what you're going to have is um three different types of journals that can uh, go into the journal uh, you've got opening balance when starting the company irrecoverable debts and correction of errors and suspense accounts i can't think of anything else that would, would um, be at uh, level level two and there but it would be any if there was something else in there it'd be anything that didn't go into the other books of prime entry so sales sales returns purchases purchase returns discounts allowed discounts received cash book petty cash book as well if you've some if there's some ways reason the examiner manages to come up with a with a journal that, that isn't one one of those ones there and asks you where it goes it will go into the journal so types of journal postings then at level two is going to be these ones in here opening balance when starting the company irrecoverable debts and the correction of suspense accounts really so uh, we've got those ones that we'll be going to our journal you know, where, you know which is our book for our non low volume journals at level three you're going to have other ones you're going to have just depreciation accounting for inventories which is stock uh, provision for doubtful debts and profit loss on disposal of, of, of basically you know, cars vans etc any kind of fixed assets um, but we're not going to have to worry about those ones although they are uh, more fun and interesting when we get to level three so that's how it would work now so this book's going to consider the adjustments that would be undertaken in the level two exam so the question might ask which of the following entries would be entered into the journal and so you'll you'll sort of see one of these one of these or two of these will be lurking within there and then you'll have something like some some cash book entries or whatever whatever it is there the only one that i could think would be a little bit confusing let's say is if there's um something missing bank charges on the bank statement missing from the cash book and that will be posted to the cash book even though it's almost trying to highlight this an error of omission um so that would be the only the only thing where you, know, you could sort of think that there'd be something a little bit tricky um but yeah basically you, you, you'll be sort of sitting there well is it one of those main prime books uh, books of prime entry and there uh, or is it this sort of journal uh, kind of approach really so those are the three yeah that'd be the first type of question that you'll see um given some scenarios which day book are you posting it to then you know we might sort of be going into uh, producing some journals uh, so let's just have a look at what what an journal is going to look like in the exam so the entries into the journals are set out of journals rather than totals. So we don't really post them as totals into like a, a T account or something. We set out journals and then we post them into the general ledger T accounts. Note that this journal can be posted to the cash book if the ledger, if that is the ledger account as well as the day book. And pretty much all the time in a manual system, the cash book is also the ledger account because we need to perform a bank reconciliation. And it doesn't work if we have the cash book as a control account within the you know, cash book as a, as, a, as a day book. Uh, and not as the uh, the ledger account and we have a separate control account within the general ledger it just doesn't work from a bank reconciliation the cash book in a manual system is always going to be both the ledger account and the day book in the exam the journal is going to look like this so we're going to have some kind of detail in here in terms of bank and you know, whatever the account is the debit amount the credit amount yeah. you may get a date you may not yeah. In the real world, in the workplace, this is what a journal actually really looks like to the journal. So we'd have a journal number uh, there, which would probably go and be tracked back to some kind of uh, workings or something in some book. And there, the date in there, the account, the amount, debits and credit amounts totaled up to check that the journal actually balances. And then an explanation about what is going on here. Might even have posted by. Uh, so this is an interesting thing here. You don't see this in the exam. But, so you see how there's quite a straight line there. In real life, for a manual system, you would indent the uh, the credit slightly to the right, and then so you have debits lining up on the left, indent off for the credits to the right. That's how you you do it in in real life. So when I was doing this 30 years ago, this is how it would be done. And the reason is is because this journal might be going off 40 lines or something, and you're then trying to post them into the T accounts. And so by indenting the credits, it just makes it a little bit easier to sort of sort of see. Why is this an important important thing? Well, students often ask, um, you know, why should, why do the debit balances traditionally go first? And the reason is is because it's just simply easier to line up if you do the debit first and then go into a credit. 
in there. So it's just an easier thing to just line up. Now, um, it's almost as well easier if you do all the debits first and then the credits, but that might not be possible uh, in, in real life, really, um, because you're just going debit, 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 debit into your posting into your tier accounts and then the credit ones, and it just reduces the chance of, of transposition errors. So that's the reason why. Um, in an exam, an AT exam, um, you know, the examiner doesn't indent uh, and doesn't total the journals. So it's going to be a bit harsh if they were to remove marks by putting the, for putting the credits first. But nobody really knows the answer, so uh, how the scoring works, because you never really sort of be able to sort of see the actual answers of the, or, or the scores in an exam. They, they don't release those. So um, you just save it to the debit balance and we'll all have to live in, in blissful ignorance, unfortunately, on that one. Um, but just for the reason why, why debits go first, it's just that bit of indenting for the credit sort of side. So that's how the journals you're going to produce. You're going to produce them like this in the exam. And let's now see what you're going to produce. I'm going to really talk three different types of question after we've done the you know, what are the scenarios that are posted to the journal question. And so we got the opening balances when starting the company. And the important thing here is to know your accounting equation. So if you don't really know that and you're not really sharp on it, then know your chapters one to six of um, of the introduction to bookkeeping course together with the paving cups exercise nails down double entry bookkeeping all day long. So we've got the accounting equation here. And let's say we've got an example. Um, you know, Mary Jones is opening up her own business. She brings the following assets into the business as a start of trading. So she's got these assets here. And they've got those debits and credits there. Now notice how here the examiner, you know, the question misses off shareholders' funds. And it's a question of seeing whether you would either just miss those out in the exam, or not and miss this capital sort of side. But clearly your debits need to be equal to your credits. And that would be the shareholders' funds. And that's because this person has invested all of these assets, all these debits, less these credits in here. So that is their shareholders' funds. That's their investment that they put into this business. And these are the assets. These are the liabilities to non-shareholders. And these are the liabilities to shareholders. You know, our money in items, or well, our positive money debits, our negative money for liabilities to non-shareholders, and our negative money that eventually is going to go to the shareholders. So... Question number one, I suppose, really, is just debits and credits. You know, and then we just think, well, what's the positive money and what's the negative money to the to the organisation? And if you're not sure about bank overdrafts, you know, well, bank overdrafts money going out to the bank, so it's negative money, so it's credit. And HMRC, so the, the you know, it'd be either money owing to HMRC, which would be a credit, money going out, or money owed from or by HMRC to the company, which would be a debit money in. So that's the first thing. Debits and credits, we'll probably see bank overdraft somewhere in here. We'll be, see the um, your VAT uh, liability or VAT asset flipping back and forth and uh, shareholders funds but missing. And that's how to answer that, that, that question there. Question number two uh, that we have is irrecoverable debts. So in, an irrecoverable debt is one where the customer has gone into administration whilst owing us money. As a result, due to the limitations of liability, we're unlikely to receive this amount. You know, it's going to be written off, really. So in practice, in practice, it's possible that a small amount may be recoverable, but the exam is going to typically say that the amount of debt, uh, the amount of the debt, which is going to be written off, typically being written down to nothing. So if the debt no longer has a value, um, so the debt no longer has a value, so it will be written down to zero. Therefore, you're going to have to credit this trade receivables amount of the debt. So let's say we've got a debt of 120 pounds. We're going to credit trade receivables £120 in there because it's now worth nothing. So it's going to go from £120 to zero. But any VAT that was due to be paid to HMRC on that debt, the £20, now long, is no longer payable. We don't have to pay that, that, that money to HMRC because we didn't get it in. So that's no longer payable. So that's going to be um, debit. And it's a reduction in the money out item, you know, a reduction in, 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 uh, in the money out item, which is positive money and a debit. So it will be debit £20. Anything left over is money that's not available to the shareholders. So a reduction in the money available to shareholders. So reduction in the money out item, positive money, debit, the irrecoverable uh, debt expense by 100. Yeah, so we credit 120, debit VAT 20, debit irrecoverable spend, expense 100. So that's that question, irrecoverable debts. 
And then the last one is going to be suspense accounts. So in chapter five, we introduce the total of debit where, where we introduce where the total of debits and credits in the trial balance um, you know, might not equal each other. And that's because at some point a journal has been entered into the general ledger whose debits did not equal credits, unlike some other errors noted in chapter four, which is where we didn't affect the trial balance talent. Suspense accounts are going to form a part, large part of the exam. That's going to be about 20%, 20, 20 marks of the exam. So in this section, we're going to go back to it again. I know we've done it twice before, we're going to spiral back. We're going to do this one again, really, and review these, this, this particular question in detail. So um, when a suspense account is created, it's because the debits and credits of a journal do not equal each other. At some point in, the, in, our, in our journal entries, we've had a journal or two journals, typically in the exam, you're going to see two journals where the, where the, um, where the debits don't equal the credits. And so a, a suspense account is going to be created for the difference. So here we've got an example here. We've got our sales here and our VAT, and we've not posted the right amount to the trade receivables here, and we're £200 out. So that's going to need, lead to the need for a suspense account of debit £200. This is a one sided journal posted through the journal. And you will not. not um, you will not post this as the question will say a suspense account has been created, meaning this journal has already been posted to the accounts, but you might, you, but you will see that you might need to post it as an individual journal to reverse it. So then we're going to find the error. And when we find the error, it's going to be needed to be reversed. And so what we're going to do is reverse. We've posted our suspense account as well. So on top of this one here, we've now got debit as well, £200 suspense account. And then what we're going to do is we're going to reverse this error here. So we've, here we have the sales here's credits and debits and now we're going to reverse that incorrect journal together with the suspense account here so we've now got the totals of our journal being the same it's possible in the exam it might say reverse the original entry post the suspense account there's two separate journals that's a possible possibility in the exam or it might just give you one uh, thing for for posting that um, we just have to sort of see, you have to see which well, how many boxes you're sort of given and whether which one it's sort of saying is it if it's just reverse the original um, the original uh, journal and then create, reverse the suspense account you know then then that then no, this will be chopped up into two. So by reversing the, the journal, so it could be split into two like that, um, and then what we're then going to do is post the correct journal. So after that, we've then posted the correct journal in here that we should have posted in the first place, like that. Okay. Now, by reversing the journal, um, you will have sort of uh, cleared the suspense account really here. So you remove the original journal, you reverse it, journal into to clear the suspense account, post the correct one in there. Um, and because you've done it, uh, you, because you've then done it, you would have had um, in terms of this, this whole thing in here, um, there's our credit of our suspense account in the journal to clear the suspense account. And initially, uh, we had our uh, we, we had our debit of our suspense account 200. So that clears in the T account the suspense account. You might also have at the end of it, you know, is a suspense account uh, put the amounts in. That's a possibility. Un unlikely. You're more likely to just be, be posting the journals in there. So a lot of um, marks for a relatively simple double entry bookkeeping. You know, you're typically going to see two questions, uh, two or two errors in there, and a suspense account being set up for the for the you know the difference between the two of them, uh, and it's just simply you know, reversing the journals and creating a nice little T account. Um, so it's not don't try anything other than just solid journal production using positive money and negative money method really, and. But this is where a place where um, students who are taught dead click is sort of fails miserably. Really, that's that tends to be the biggest um, complaint here. Really, is that if you're, you're dead clickers, uh, people who taught it tend to not like not do well in the suspense accounts. You know, I'm sure somebody will turn up and say, "I do dead click and I, I do amazing." Uh, but typically, on on average, people who do who learn using dead click uh, fail miserably because they can't get the concept of I'm now reversing that initial journal and really sort of seeing the money movements in there. That's where that's where uh, it's a big a big weakness and and really the reason why I sort of set the introduction to bookkeeping uh, book out all in terms of how it is I do it for two things really one for this suspense account uh, question and the other one for control accounts as well so I also have assets equals liabilities plus capital just create a nice T account uh, in the in, for the suspense T account and that's the whole reason why those those that book is set out like it is not necessarily for that 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 um, that uh, unit, although it will be slightly better uh, for in terms of produce slightly better outcomes in there, it's really because it will produce considerably better outcomes in this unit here. So you will have then uh, cleared your, your suspense count uh, in here, 
and always use T accounts for your suspense account workings. You're going to get more than one error affecting the trial balance uh, in, in the exam. So you'll get given typically two, um, two uh, sort of errors creating a suspense account going in different directions. In that if you don't use a T account and you try and use some kind of totals or adding or whatever is there, you're just going to be very confused. Use T accounts all day long for suspense accounts. So let's have a look here. So let's see, we've got some here. We, you see how we've got two different errors going in opposite directions in here. We've got to update the accounts. So we've got to update the motor vehicle expense and we've got to update the suspense account. So that, that could be that could be a question that you might have. Two going in the other the way and you're going to, um, you know, you're going to sort of reverse it out and that, that, that will be that really. Um, you know, well, this is, this is the correction and uh, the correction journals. Post them into to T accounts. You see how it comes back to zero at the end because this would have been you know, we've got these errors here. Suspense account's been created for that. Update the following accounts. Right, okay. Post the motor vehicle thing, come up with the uh, carry down balance or the port down, port, port down balance, and then post the suspense account amounts. Notice how here the details are the other account that it goes to in here. So in the motor expense, vehicles expenses, it would be the suspense one, and in the suspense one, it would be the motor vehicles one. That detail is just so you can track back and see where the other side of the journal is posted to. That's all that, that all that, that is. Again, it's in the introduction to bookkeeping unit. So that is our um, the journal postings. A lot of marks in in uh, in the exam for this one. So you'll have sort of you know 20 plus marks of the suspense accounts on its own, and then you'll have the irrecoverable debts uh, question, and you'll have the opening trial balance question. So you sort of you know together with something about which which journals posted to the uh, which which sort of scenarios posted to the uh, the journal, or which financial transactions posted to the journal. Something like 30 marks at least um, in there. You may be even rising to 35 in the exam with this sort of journal posting suspense accounts and those those kind of questions in the next chapter we're going to undertake the vat uh, question which typically requires a preparing a t account from the day book entries um or updating uh, due to error, correct, error corrections so like all the questions in this unit uh, and introduction to bookkeeping your working should use t accounts wherever possible to reduce the chances of making mistakes so t accounts and money in or your, your positive money negative money double entry bookkeeping from the introduction to bookkeeping unit really sort of sorts out suspense accounts puts you in a good place for that and it's going to put you in a really good place for this t account question in the via in the uh, in the sort of for a vat control account so that's the reason why, why that's set out as it is uh hope you enjoyed all that uh thanks for listening really important chat to this though go back over um you know do all the questions in your book and get some good practice on that that and um, those those t accounts and those journal production uh see you in the next one bye bye